In October this year, Evan Osnos, a former Beijing correspondent for The New Yorker and a Pulitzer Prize winner, published an article titled China's Age of Malays. Party officials are vanishing, young workers are lying flat, and entrepreneurs are fleeing the country. What does China's inner turmoil mean for the world? Local governments, short of cash, have adopted a subtle extortion method that lawyers call taxation by investigation. A factory owner in Shanghai told me that party officials use bank records to identify residents with liquid assets of at least 30 million yuan, about $4 million, and then offered them a choice, hand over 20% or risk a full tax audit. In early November, the Chinese Ministry of State Security unusually published an article titled The National Security Agency as a Staunch Guardian of Financial Security, stating, There are numerous risks and challenges to financial security, the interwoven economic and financial risks remain significant. Some with ulterior motives attempt to create disturbances for profit, including those who bet against, sell short, talk down, and hollow out the market. They aim to shake the international community's confidence in investing in China and to provoke financial turmoil within the country, presenting new challenges to maintaining financial security under new circumstances. Many wealthy Chinese individuals have had to reconsider their options and choose to leave the country. In 2022, over 10,000 affluent individuals fled China, surpassing Russia and making it the country with the highest net outflow of high net worth individuals globally. Chinese state media incessantly criticizes this trend with headlines like, China's assets are being transferred abroad at a large scale. Who is hollowing out China? The topic of transferring assets abroad has always been sensitive in communist China. To understand this, let's revisit a report from October 2018. Published on the PricewaterhouseCooper official website by UBS Group, the 2018 Billionaires Report, New Visionaries, and the Chinese Century mentioned that as of 2017, communist China had 373 billionaires, more than half of whom came from real estate, 20%, technology, 19%, and consumer goods and retail, 13%. They collectively held assets worth 1.12 trillion US dollars, about 7.8 trillion yuan, averaging 30 billion US dollars, about 209 billion yuan per person. This question then arises, who are the real owners of these assets and how are they transferred abroad? Let's turn to the data for answers. First, let's examine the data on China's Outward Direct Investment, ODI. This data, published in the 2022 Statistical Bulletin of China's Outward Direct Investment, is the most authoritative official data from the Chinese government, jointly released by the Ministry of Commerce, National Bureau of Statistics, and State Administration of Foreign Exchange. If such official data contain clear loopholes, one can only imagine the extent of actual discrepancies. It is important to clarify that ODI refers to Chinese investments in foreign entities that are responsible for operations and bear the profits and losses, rather than indirect investments in securities, stocks, or bonds. Indirect investments have high liquidity and can be easily liquidated into cash and repatriated to China. In contrast, funds from direct investments are tied up in various business operations, have poor liquidity, and depend on the business itself to slowly earn profits, and they might even be operating at a loss. By the end of 2022, China's total ODI amounted to 2.8 trillion US dollars. The figure is intimidating, and its significance can only be fully grasped through comparison. At the end of 2001, when China joined the World Trade Organization and foreign capital began flooding into the country, establishing numerous foreign enterprises and turning China into the world's factory, the cumulative total of foreign direct investment FDI, in China over 21 years, as per the Ministry of Commerce, was only $2.8 trillion. This implies that China's ODI has far surpassed foreign direct investment into China by 20.6%. However, this comparison is not enough. From 2002 to 2022, China's cumulative trade surplus from goods and services trade was $4.6 trillion. This means the total scale of China's outward investment, compared to the full scope of its cumulative trade surplus, reaches an astonishing 60%. For a developing country like China, still surviving to overcome poverty by the end of 2022, the scale of outward investments surpassing foreign investment utilization and nearly reaching 60% of the cumulative trade surplus is almost unbelievable. 
Next, let's look at the entities behind this massive investment. According to the data from the Statistical Bulletin, private enterprises account for 6.8%, individual businesses 4.7%, foreign-funded enterprises, including those from Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan, collectively 4.7%, in addition, collective enterprises and shareholding cooperative enterprises, both types of collective enterprises, together account for 0.8%. These non-state-owned investment entities together make up only 17% of the total. The remaining 83% of the investment comes from state-owned entities, indicating that state-owned units are the absolute majority of China's outward investment. The bulletin further categorizes state-owned units, state-owned enterprises are purely state-owned, joint stock companies and limited liability companies with state-owned shares are those where the state ownership is dominant. If private shares are predominant, these entities would be classified under private enterprises. The category Others refers to non-enterprise social organizations, all under government management. This analysis reveals that of China's $2.75 trillion in outward investment, 83% is from state-owned entities, amounting to $2.29 trillion. The portion truly invested by the private sector is only 17%, corresponding to $468.3 billion. US dollars. Therefore, the majority of China's outward investment is channeled through state-owned entities. This fact is crucial in unraveling the complexities of China's outward investment puzzle. The following data on China's main industries for foreign direct investment ODI, is quite intriguing. The top seven industries are 1. Leasing and business services 2. Wholesale and retail 3. Finance 4. Manufacturing 5. Mining 6. Information and software and 7. Transportation these seven sectors collectively account for 88.9% of China's ODI. Notably, leasing and business services, ranking first, account for a staggering 39%. Transportation, in seventh place, has an ODI stock of, of $96.8 billion, representing 3.5% of the total. Information and software, in sixth place, $38.5 billion, 5%. Mining, in fifth place, $210.1 billion, 7.6%, and manufacturing in fourth place, $268 billion, 9.7%. A detailed analysis will be provided for the top three sectors, finance, wholesale and retail, and business services. First, a reference system to discern authenticity is necessary. The summary data of China's actual utilization of foreign capital by industry from 2005 to 2022, as previously explained, actual utilization of foreign capital refers to direct investment by foreign entities in China, which is invested into business operations. This statistical list helps clarify many issues. Note that from 2005 to 2022, direct foreign investment FDI, in China's financial sector was nearly $96 billion, in wholesale and retail $162.1 billion, and in business services $246 billion. These three sectors correspond to the top three industries in China's ODI, and each one will be compared individually. China's ODI in the financial sector amounts to $303.9 billion, more than triple the size of foreign investment in the same sector in China. Despite China's financial sector being somewhat opaque to foreign investment, Chinese people are familiar with foreign banks, brokerages, and investment trusts with organizations like the Blackstone Group deeply rooted in China. In comparison, China's ODI of $303.9 billion in the financial sector raises questions about its actual deployment. Such a large investment would imply numerous ongoing projects. One would expect Chinese banks to be ubiquitous in Europe and America, even in remote regions of the U.S., commensurate with such a large investment scale. As for Chinese securities firms and trust institutions operating abroad, their presence and operations are relatively unheard of. According to data from Chinese State Administration of Foreign Exchange, by the end of 2022, the net overseas assets of Chinese banks was $166.5 billion. This figure, representing shareholders' actual contributions plus accumulated operating profits, is relatively accurate. 
Thus, China's actual ODI in the financial sector is likely significantly lower than 166.5 billion U.S. dollars, possibly around 100 billion, similar to foreign investment in China's financial sector. This implies that over two thirds of the reported 303.9 billion dollars in the financial sector is inflated or fictitious. Finally, the top-ranked leasing and business services sector, with an ODI stock of 1,073.7 billion U.S. dollars, 39 percent, primarily involves office equipment leasing, financial consulting, legal advisory, and advertising marketing. These service industries are typically not capital intensive but intellect driven, with major costs in office furnishings and employee salaries and benefits, lacking substantial fixed assets. Foreign investment in China's business services is 246.2 billion U.S. dollars, just a quarter of China's ODI in this sector. Yet foreign firms like the Big Four accounting firms and major consulting companies like Bain, McKinsey, Capvision, and BCG almost monopolized China's top-tier audit and consulting services. In the various subsectors, foreign commercial service enterprises, such as the top five foreign real estate agencies, are overwhelming domestic agencies in China, relegating them to picking up leftovers. It begs the question: Are there any notable Chinese enterprises in the leasing and commercial service sector that have provided audit or consultancy services? The answer is clear: In the commercial service industry, China's outward investment is merely a facade. In a recent analysis of financial investment trends, it has been revealed that approximately $200 billion in the financial sector, $360 billion in wholesale and retail. And over one trillion dollars in business services of foreign investments are entirely fabricated. These three sectors alone account for a staggering 1.6 trillion dollars in false foreign investments, representing 58 percent of the total foreign investment stock. Remarkably, 83 percent of these funds are invested by state-owned enterprises, suggesting that these false investments are predominantly orchestrated by these entities. The ultimate beneficiaries of these maneuvers are not the ordinary citizens, but rather the top echelons of power in the country. In essence, the top three industries of communist China's foreign investment, primarily representing asset transfers by the top CCP elites, are substantially comprised of fake investments. The funds are mostly laundered overseas, forming a significant part of their foreign wealth. The question of who is hollowing out China finds a tangible answer in this context. Supporting this viewpoint is relatively straightforward, given the clear destinations of China's foreign investments. 57.7 percent of these investments are channeled through Hong Kong, a critical hub for money laundering activities by China. Additionally, 13.3 percent is directed to the British Virgin Islands, and 7.7 percent to the Cayman Islands. According to the latest official data from the Chinese government, in 2022, China's direct investment in Hong Kong amounted to 1.6 trillion dollars, primarily distributed across several key sectors. One leasing and business services, seven hundred and fifty-three point three billion dollars. Two wholesale and retail, two hundred and forty-one point nine billion dollars. Three financial sector, one hundred and eighty point six billion dollars. Four mining, ninety-nine point five billion dollars. Five manufacturing, seventy-three point seven billion dollars. The combined investment stock of the top three sectors—business services, hotel and resale, and financial services—totals an impressive 1.18 trillion dollars. These funds are essentially channeled through Hong Kong under the guise of Chinese state-owned enterprises, highlighting a significant extraction of resources. Xi Jinping emptied China through state policies and power. Multiple media outlets have reported that on August 18th, Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi announced at the Eighth Ministerial Conference of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation Coordination that China is committed to joint development with African countries. As part of this commitment, China will waive 23 interest-free loan debts for 17 African countries that were due by the end of 2021. Additionally, China plans to transfer $10 billion worth of special drawing rights from the International Monetary Fund (IMF) to African nations. This move by the Chinese government has sparked significant dissatisfaction among Chinese netizens, who criticize Beijing for extending a helping hand abroad while striking hard at home. 
Essentially, they argue that the Chinese Communist Party prioritizes maintaining its regime and so-called international status over the welfare of ordinary citizens, leading to a new round of emptying China through extravagant spending. The potential ulterior motives behind these actions are not elaborated here, but are well understood by many. In comparison to other elite families within the Chinese Communist Party, Xi Jinping, as the supreme leader of Communist China, and his family have not been remiss in their efforts to empty China. As early as 2016, the Panama Papers leak from the Mossack Fonseca law firm, which reportedly included up to 11 million documents, revealed that many family members of at least eight current and former members of the Chinese Communist Party Central Politburo Standing Committee were implicated. Among them was Deng Jiaogui, the brother-in-law of Xi Jinping. Deng had established two companies in the British Virgin Islands back in 2009, a time when Xi was still a member of the Politburo and not yet the nation's leader. A 2012 Bloomberg investigation reported that Xi Jinping's family possessed a considerable fortune, amounting to $376 million, even when Xi was serving as the vice president of China. A significant portion of this wealth was managed by his brother-in-law Deng Jiaogui. The most recent news involves an investigation by the European Union, which found that Xi Jinping's family is involved in expanding the electric vehicle industry and profiting from subsidies and the construction of new factories. A key factor in this is Daniel Foa, the foreign son-in-law of Xi Jinping's family, married to the daughter of Qi Anan, Xi's sister. Foa came into the spotlight last summer when Fisker, a struggling American electric vehicle startup, announced its plans to establish a distribution center in Shanghai and appointed Foa as a member of its board in China. Wu Wenxing, an expert on China, commented, "I've said it before. The Communist Party's trick is deception. It's not just used to deal with the United States, but also against its own people. Foa's billions and his vast business empire could not have been built without the support of CCP elites." The Chinese Communist Party aims to dominate the global electric vehicle market, often resorting to price wars backed by elite support. Previously, the European Union observed a suspicious influx of cheap Chinese electric vehicles in the European market, prompting a special investigation. Ursula von der Leyen, president of the European Commission, stated. China clearly has an overcapacity issue and exports these excess capacities, especially when they are directly and indirectly subsidized. Frankly speaking, the various regressive acts of emptying China by Chinese Communist Party elites, including Xi Jinping's family, that have come to light so far are just the tip of the iceberg. In reality, the Chinese Communist Party elites, including the Xi family, have been ruthlessly emptying out China through various means, completely disregarding the lives and welfare of the Chinese people. The concept of common prosperity, heavily propagated by official Chinese media, has ironically turned into a bleak joke. This sentiment was candidly expressed by an elderly person living alone in rural China, who voiced the harsh realities faced by ordinary people struggling in poverty. Yeah. Hey, Grandpa, what are you eating there? Just some rice. Why are you keeping the rice in there? What can I do? I'm old. I can't eat much anymore. Aren't you cold sitting on the bridge? I'm here to sell vegetables. Is it easy to sell them? Not really. At my age, around 80 to 90. What can I do? How much do you sell them for? Well, I make about three or four yuan a day. I'm out of options. My partner just passed away, and I'm 93. Why are you still wearing slippers? And you're 93? You should be relaxing at home. Relaxing with what? How much have you sold this afternoon? Nothing yet. It's already afternoon, and you're wearing slippers. You must be freezing in this cold weather. How do you manage to sell? People pay. I sell. Let me see how much it is. I'll buy it all. How far is your home from here? Around 15 li. 15 li. What time did you come this morning? I've been here since 4 a.m. Grandpa, I've packed it all up for you. I'll also buy you some shoes. They're warm. Try them on. And here's a pair of gloves. Your hands must be freezing. Try them on. Thank you. No need to thank me. It's cold. You should head home early.